Hi, this is David Papkin with TSI Consulting Services. Welcome back to Upgrading Your Skills to Windows Server 2016. In this video demo, Managing and Optimizing Storage in Windows Server 2016, Implementing and Managing Storage Using iSCSI. So we're going to configure iSCSI storage. So I'm on to London Server 1, and I just wanted to point out one of the things that's a little different. In 2016, we don't see the Server Manager, so I wanted you to see how to bring it up. I'm going to go to All Apps, Server Manager. Under More right here, I'm going to pin it to the taskbar. Great. And this one right here. I have to wait for it to finish. So I'm going to go add roles. And what I'm going to do is on this one, I'm going to take a look under the file and storage and SCSI services on here. I'm going to take iSCSI target server. Next. And I'll restart it as needed. And then I'm going to install. OK, so I, now I can see the file and storage services on here. I'm going to click a nice SCSI. I'm going to say new SCSI virtual disk. Right, right here. Storage, I'm going to select under C. Then I'm going to go on this. Next, I'm going to call this iSCSI 1. iSCSI disk 1. Next, I'm going to see 5 gig. Now this one right now, notice these different sizes we have here. Fixed size, dynamic expanding, differencing. For this, we're going to do uh, dynamically expanding. Keep in mind, differencing you shouldn't do in a production environment. It's not recommended because it's a little bit unstable and there's a performance hit. It's right there. I'm going to say this new iSCSI target next. Now the target name in this. London dash DC1. Now it's not case sensitive for Windows, though if you have some uh, some of your clients that are Linux, then please make sure them that they're the appropriate case. Next. Now the type of the add the initiator on in this. So in this one right here, on this, I'm going to say IP address because this one right here is the IP address of London DC1. And I'm going to add on this one right there. IP address on this, and I'm going to go 10.10.010. .10 because the reason why is because I'm going to use multipath IO on this right here. Good. I have both of them. Then I'm going to go in this. Next. I'm not going to do anything for authentication with CHAP for this one right here. And I'm going to do is create. Great. Done. On this right here. I'm going to say new iSCSI virtual disk. And this one right here. Let's see. Next. Right here. This is guy SCSI disk 2. 
next 5 gig dynamically expanding and notice I have this existing target great see with both the IP addresses there next and I'm going to create I'm going to create another SCSI disk three five in this one in DC one next create SCSI disk, say four, five gig also in this one too, right here. This is the target right here. Create. Great, I'm going to do one more. Five. Create. Now notice that I have these five disks right here. And the reason is that they're not connected because uh, no one's connected to them yet. I don't have not set up any initiators yet. The next thing I'm going to do is configure multipath IO. here I'm gonna enable my second one here because we're using multipath IO on this and I need to have two NICs on this one now on um, server one great I've done that I'm going to do the same thing on this one right here. Enable that. So you can see now that I have them both enabled. Now I'm going to take a look at this right here. Do a little bit of a refresh. And we should see something here. Notice the IP addresses on both of this one right here. Great. I'm going to go back to DC1. I'm going to add a feature to this. this and I'm going to add on this one multipath IO say next click on install there now that I'm on um, London DC1 I got to do is the SCSI initiator on this one right here so that it can connect to the 
SCSI iSCSI target server, which is London Server 1. And this one right here. Now the target is London dash server one. And this one right here. I'm gonna go quick connect. Cool, it found it. Nice. Done. Very nice. Then okay. Now tools. The next thing I'm gonna look at is multipath IO. Right here. Discover multipaths. Add support for iSCSI device. Gonna go add. Yes, I'm going to reboot now. I'm going to go to Tools. Go back to Multipath IO. You'll notice is now you see something right here. You now see this device right here. Next thing I do is configure and, co and connect to configure the iSCSI targets. On the iSCSI initiator, I'm going to disconnect. Connect and that's right here. Enable multi path right here. And then under the advanced right here. And change the local one to iSCSI right here. And the initiator I'm going to take here. We'll take here. Click OK. Now under here, very good. I'm going to be here. Ten ten. And I'm going to pick in that one right here. OK. I'm going to do is click the volumes and devices right here and click auto configure. See all these ones? Remember the five disks right here? I'm going to go back to the target ones right here. Connect on this target right here. Then click devices on this right here. MPO right here. On this one, notice we have all these different ways for multipath IO. Now, this path has the following one. I'm going to pick the first and go details. Because notice there are two paths here because this is multipath IO. And the first one is 172.16. Notice the source. Target will be this one. The second one, 10, 10, 11, good. So okay, and okay. And finally, I'm going to verify the presence of SCSI disk. I'm going to the local one right here. File and storage services right here. I'm going to do is click disk. Notice now these disks right here. 5, 5, 5, 5, and 5. All five of them right there. The five disks and they're all iSCSI right here. Excellent. Then of course you could do something else. Bring it online, etc.
etc. If you wanted to, I could go bring online. So this concludes this video demo. I've in, configured this iSCSI storage, installed the target feature, configured the targets, configured multipath I.O., connected to and configured the iSCSI targets, and then verified the presence of iSCSI disks. This is David Papkin. Thank you for watching.